Hi, I'm Tintin Wisniewski from the Hoover Institution. Hoover's Corette Task Force on K-12 Education, with the help of some friends, has attempted to project what American education might look like in the year 2030. By that time, today's newborn will become college freshmen. The task of looking so far ahead while fre refreshing is also quite formidable. We invite you to join us in this predictive video presentation in search for solutions to the challenges that American education faces in the years ahead. For more information about this project, please visit our website at AmericanEducation2030.com. Russ Whitehurst is Senior Fellow at the Brookings Institution. He was Director of the Institute of Education Sciences within the U.S. Department of Education. His specialties include teacher quality, student assessment, learning and instruction, and preschool. He describes the instructional revolution that will occur by 2030 by emphasizing the impacts of curriculum and technology. Hello, I'm Russ Whitehurst. I'm a member of the Correct Task Force and a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution. What will curriculum look like in 2030? Now, in 2010, curriculum is the orphan child of education reform. The popular policies of the day, things like charter schools, uh, standards and accountability, the role of neighborhoods, are very uh, intensely uh, advocated uh, by policy experts, and curriculum is hardly mentioned. From McGuffey's Reader in the 1860s until now, the curriculum has been a commercial textbook in which each student in a particular grade receives an identical copy of the book. Any technology is generally found in the ancillary materials and reflects the trailing edge of popular biz business tools. For example, overhead transparencies were all the rage for use by teachers in the 1980s. With the advent of the standards and accountability movement in the 1990s and the move to statewide adoption of textbooks in big states such as Texas and California, the imperative for textbook publishers has been to make sure that everything required by anyone is in the curriculum. The result is what one critic has described as curricula that are a mile wide and an inch deep. Even the best curricula lack coherence, and the textbooks are so thick and heavy that students develop muscle strains uh, lugging them around in their backpacks. Experts on content and instruction have little to do with the development of textbooks other than to have their names on the covers. Textbook adoptions are largely determined by committees that after seeing that the required topics are to be found somewhere in the index of the book, pay most attention to the attractiveness of the materials, the freebies offered by the publishers, and the degree to which the textbooks require teachers to change their practices, something that's considered bad by most of the educators on the selection committees. Yet even with these remarkable deficiencies in the development and selection process, textbooks now differ in their effectiveness on student achievement. For example, a federal study of the relative effects of four widely used elementary school math curricula found differences between the best and the worst that were uh, represented as much as several months of learning in a single year of instruction. These effects are larger than those demonstrated by currently popular reforms, and they are almost free in the sense that the price of a less effective textbook is generally the same as that of a more expensive one. Looking back from 2030, the promise of curriculum demonstrated by these evaluation findings and a continued investment in the science of learning and instruction by the federal government has generated breakthroughs in curriculum that have fundamentally transformed the nature of schooling for students in U.S. public schools. In 2030, technology has taken over. Most instruction is delivered in virtual learning environments. Students go to school only to have a safe and supervised environment in which to engage in interactions that require a social contact, such as sports and music, and to use new technology that is still too expensive to be deployed in homes. Curriculum is developed and continuously updated through software applications that determine the logical skill and knowledge prerequisites of any particular learning goal. Unobtrusive brain imaging sensors monitor learning in real time and determine the curriculum sequence for individual students. There are no more committees of experts sitting in hotel rooms deciding what math students need to know to learn algebra. Curriculum is personalized and students move at dramatically different paces and sequences through a curriculum until they demonstrate mastery of various waypoints and endpoints. 
those waypoints and endpoints are themselves personalized and that students can decide which topics they want to dive into deeply. The curriculum makes extensive use of social agents, both real peers and adults who interact with students online, as well as avatars that realistically mimic social experience. The large-scale randomized trials of curriculum that fuel the interest in the power of curriculum back in 2010 are no longer relevant because each student receives a unique curriculum. What we evaluate today is the relative effectiveness of particular approaches to transmitting a skill or knowledge set as it occurs at a given point in a curriculum sequence. In 2030, there is nostalgia for the schoolhouse of yore, a teacher standing in front of a class of 30 students trying to help them learn the material in a 600-page textbook. But you only have to look at the dramatic advances in what students learn and are able to do to see that it is by far better today than it was in 2010. Curriculum, designed through cognitive science and delivered through powerful technologies, is a lever that has allowed the U.S. to leapfrog its international competitors and regain its position as the world's education leader.